2022 may have been the biggest year yet for weddings, but that doesn't mean I'm forgetting about 2023. Stay tuned to hear how I'm using Zola, the sponsor of today's episode, to help ensure my 2023 calendar is full of great weddings. Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, in which I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons and those I feel are the next generation icons of the weddings and event industry, all to provide you with education and inspiration. Speaking of inspiration, last week's episode was a wonderful panel discussion about creating beautiful photos for clients and for our own marketing purposes, and it was with Jose Villa, Lori Ahrens, and Carrie Goldberg. Today's guest is David Beam of David Beam Experiences. David is a very popular event designer based out of New York City, working worldwide, and has been on the show several times before. David is known for his inventive work and trademark lavish flower creations. He has designed countless weddings for society, high-profile, and discerning clients, including Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas, as well as a host of celebrity and Fortune 500 corporate events. His insights and designs have been featured in numerous major publications. Enjoy this very special conversation with David Bean. David, when I first interviewed you, which um, I did a recent re-release, uh, episode 351 for people who absolutely should go back and listen to that, episode 351. But anyway, in it, um, you talked a lot about how the path unfolds before you and you really just trust where it takes you. So I'm, I'm curious, you know, where has it taken you in the recent past or, or even in the past few years? The the path I think is turned into a roller coaster <laughs> yeah. for a lot of us. You you know, um, and I don't want to s- start off this interview with that whole thing, but I think there recently I heard, and I think I believe, and it's not an awful thing, but I think that we have been basically living in a state yes, of trauma absolutely. for the past couple of years, and. Trauma can be traumatizing, but can also light a fire. And I think it the path that it has created for me is, is, this is, not was or not what I wanted it to be or what I thought it should be or what I thought was coming. It has created a, this is where we are, this is what we're doing, and now what do we do? And at first, the trauma was a lot to handle. <laughs> and now it's like, okay, those chairs aren't going to show up. I can get excited about it or figure out where I can get more chairs. It's about, I think, maybe it's self-preservation, but it's also company preservation and staff preservation. There have been times when I was like really worried about my staff. You know my people. They are they're wonderful. Wonderful. Great, great people. I have a wonderful staff. And when something doesn't go as planned, they take it very personally. And I'm very lucky to have that in my life and in my business. But that can also, you know, when you can't produce the perfection that you're used to, can make you a little nuts and so i've i've had to do a whole lot of well i'm not upset it's not your fault let's figure it out together so it's it's been a very interesting roller coaster path because one day the <laughs> the chairs and the plates and the forks are there and the next day when you need them they're not well and i hear you talking about not being i i interpret this as not being so reactive. You know, I, I've had challenges with that in the past. And now with what you're talking about um, since the pandemic and however we're coming out of it now, I feel like I have to be even less reactive. Like I have been working so hard on just really being in the moment, not worrying so much about the future, not worrying or if the problem comes up just to assume I can solve it. It's like, this has been the ultimate test of that, of that characteristic. Yeah. You know, I think back to my days as a teacher and I was an absolute reactive. I was a screamer and yeller. And God bless those kids who survived me because I knew I had a vision and I knew that they had the ability. And when you're dealing with kids, you sometimes have to uh, 
get excited to get the point across. Uh, but I would realize that I would go home at the end of the day absolutely exhausted and like want a drink and just uh, it, I realized reacting was taking more out of me than it should when I could stop, breathe, explain, and get the same results. Have you also had any major like epiphanies throughout this whole experience and what you've been through, where you're at now? Anything recent that has just been like like a, a huge aha? Wow. I don't know if, if I've had an aha as much as it's just made me look at where I am. You know, I'm I can see 65. How in the hell did that happen? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I don't see myself just like did I think maybe I could just retire and walk away from this mess? It, not a mess, but it's a challenge. Every day is a new challenge and it's like, oh my god, what now? Do I see me walking away from it? No. No, and I think that's been for a while, I was like, okay, that's it. Can I sell the company? What can I what can I do? What can I do to get out of this? Right, right. Just feeling burnt out. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Because there's a this is a lot. What we do in a normal day is a lot. And then with the supply chain, you know, I I'm looking at the environment and I'm looking at governments and uh, you know, where are flowers gonna come from? <laughs> You know, it, it it it's a lot to consider. I know, I know we will figure it out. We are a group of, we all in this business are a group of creatives who make things work. It may not be the way we originally planned, but we can, what we do is about love. So we can always make something work. But here's the thing. I, a moment ago, we we're talking about feeling burnt out. And and yes, we do what we love, but there's also that element of, of feeling burnt out. And we have been so fucking challenged in these past few years. If I mean, I know speaking for myself, it's come up in my mind it, it, as much as I love doing what I do and the creativity, I sometimes wonder long term, what can I do? What like let let's let's put finances aside. Let's just say finances are not an issue at all. Could you see yourself quote unquote retiring do you see an exit strategy nah i'd love it i i am think my exit strategy wants to include my people so i i you know i've given them my word that i'm just not going to up and walk away i'm i'm not doing that they've worked too hard and i'm not going to walk away from it Hearing the excitement in your voice when you said it, it, it was a lot, and it it is, I think some people were burnt out, but I think it is more about just being whelmed, <laughs> you know, just not overwhelmed because we're still here, whelmed with all the information and the bobbing and weaving that we had to do to make our everyday work, personally and professionally. But I think what's coming out of this is that we can, we have, and that's a really, I think, important thing to consider because we're not burnt out. We're still here. You know, burnt out means there's no fuel left. But when you're feeling that, when you're feeling it, like, what do you do? Like, what do you do to ground yourself and to keep yourself going when you are feeling like tired mainly i'm just like mary shut up and do the job you know just stop and reset you know what what happens with your phone it gets overwhelmed and gets too much stuff and you reboot it and it works just fine and i think taking time for yourself and even if that is 3 minutes just to stop and go somewhere Go walk, you know, take the dog and walk down to the bottom of the driveway and back up. And anything to just break the cycle. Is that what you do? Literally, you'll just get, drop everything, step outside, take a walk. Literally. Yeah. Or just sit here and just close your eyes and 
breathe a moment and just relax and just say, okay, step away, breathe. And, you know, it sounds simple. It is hard to remember to do. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it really makes a huge, huge difference. You have to reset. You like it, it goes back to my teaching thing. You can sit there and scream all day long and you're just going to be worn out and you're not going to be effective in the end. Yeah, it's funny. I have to write in my calendar. I have to remind myself literally every day in the calendar. and I should put it in like six times to just take a moment and focus on my breathing. Just just a few minutes. I have to remind myself. I get so caught up. Yeah. And and really, that's what it is. I may have told this story in one of our other interviews, but I used to work with a conductor who was a reactionary, and she was just wild, just a wild woman. Very good conductor and very respected. But I would, like, be in her car and... We'd come up to a stoplight and she'd start screaming at the stoplight <laughs> because it was, you know, it was getting in her way. Right. And I'm like, how about you, when you see a stoplight, stop, say thank you for this moment and take a breath. I love that. And then go on. Yeah. Retool it. You know, I'm going to try to remember this and I'm going to put out a video about it is chaos happens when you try to control. Ooh, I like that. And I think that is really profound. Whether it's politics or relationships, it's across all facets. If the shortest distance between point A and point B is a straight line, think of a stream of water. If there's a stream of water going downhill, what is it going to do? It's going to go straight down. What happens if you step in the middle of it? It causes chaos to that stream. Everything in nature, everything in this life wants to go from point A to point B in a straight line. And if you step in the middle of it, you have to expect chaos. So if you can step back and step out of the way and let that stream flow and watch to see where it's going, the is is going to be a lot stronger than the I want. I totally agree with you. I think you're absolutely right. Trying to control the uncontrollable is a complete waste of time. But of course, I mean, I'm, I say that and I forget all the time and I try to control and I have to be reminded. I get my ass handed to me and then I got to remember. Yeah, I mean, think of politicians. They're, they're trying to control who people are and what they do. It's going to cause chaos. It's going to, you know, chaos is going to happen. Not speaking religious, well, even religion gets in the way of natural flow. But if there is a plan, I, I don't know whatever you think that plan is, whatever your religion is, but if you step in the middle of Mother Nature's plan, you're going to get slapped upside the head, and you're not going to like it, and then you're going to get pissed off because it's not what you want. You can stomp all you want. But the plan is already there and it's already moving. So step back and see what the plan is and how you can fit into it. Hopefully you're getting a moment to breathe after an epic year of weddings. But if you're already looking ahead to next year and the year after that, let me tell you about Zola, today's fastest growing wedding platform. You probably already know Zola as the place couples love and trust for all things wedding planning, but did you know that it's also where they're finding their wedding professionals? If you're not on Zola, you're missing out. Zola has free listings and no expensive annual contract. Instead, they let you connect with couples on your terms if they seem like a good match for your business. If not, politely decline at no cost to you. Zola is clearly built with and for wedding professionals. They truly care. Find out for yourself why wedding pros love Zola just as much as couples do. To create your free listing and get your first few connections for free, go to Zola.com forward slash Andy. That's Z-O-L-A dot com forward slash Andy. Do you have any examples, specific examples that you can think of where this happened to you, where you, you started to get really thinking, oh, God, I, I need to fix, I need to control this, I, I, this is just not working. And then you realize, okay, 
let me step back and it's really fine. Well, it's, you know, it's the reactionary in me wants to come out. I, we had six, 700 chairs caught on a boat coming from China for a big wedding we were doing in Aspen and they weren't going to get there. Oh, I, I, yeah. I mean, we had them made specifically for this wedding and, you know, I could throw a fit. Right. But they were still sitting on the boat. Right. What's good? What good is that going to do? What good is that going to do? So you just have to back up. What did you do in that case? We found more that weren't what we wanted, but <laughs> they were chairs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and no one knew and life went on. Yeah, right. And the chaos wasn't there. I, I could have thrown a fit and, oh, my God, we don't have chairs. Everybody stand. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know? no, you just make it work. You can't control it. I couldn't control it, so I couldn't cause chaos. What, what are you super excited about? Like, like, and I'm talking about from a creative standpoint, in terms of creativity, have you, uh, anything recent where you're just creatively really excited, inspired? I think what, you know, what we survived was basically three years of weddings in one year. Yeah, right. And we got to be really creative, but we didn't get to think about it and we didn't get to enjoy it. The one thing, Andy, I've always said was love is love is love. It's always going to be there and people are always going to mm, want to get married. Yeah. I don't know where corporate's going to end up. You know, we we have more and more corporate business. It seems to be coming back. But I've counted on corporate business before and it went away. You know, weddings never go away. And I think that's what's exciting is that they may change in scale, but maybe the change in scale, instead of standing back and throwing money at it, will help us be more creative and create more sincere, loving moments. Yeah. You know, also, David, before we go, I'm wondering what you love to do that keeps you you know keeps you in a good place helps get you in a good place when it's not actually the work do you spend a lot of time alone i really enjoy the alone time i i really do you know maddie has uh started started his business at the farm you know where you first visited right thistle do thistle do yeah and i saw the opportunity to sell it at a great price uh, because I knew it wasn't going to be the forever home uh, because of its proximity to the road and the road always bugged me. So I when during the pandemic and the housing market, I sold it and we're, we have a very nice house up in Connecticut now, but it really detached him from everything. So now he has a studio, uh, a working studio. So he's working virtually uh, with people virtually and in person. And so that was like he's in the city four or five days a week and I'm up here in Connecticut and it really does help me be me. Yeah. And, and not react, but step back. Uh, do I want to, f I am craving a farm because that's how I recharge is digging in the dirt. Yeah. That really makes a difference. Mm. So I'm looking, I'm not going to rush into things who knows <laughs> because is is right now with the housing market and the market so i don't want to get too excited too quickly yeah i don't know that this is the time for that <laughs> yeah yeah necessarily well before we go event wise what's the next uh, not the next event but the, the next event that that you are really super jazzed about you know and if you could give a little detail about it oh yeah we are uh, we're doing a small wedding in Loire in the south of France. Uh, and I think it's only like 30 people, but we're building basically a museum in the garden that no one will see until the last moment uh, after the dinner. We're building a beautiful ceremony, beautiful dinner, got that. And then we're going to walk people through the garden and suddenly there's this modern like for lack of a better word, muse in the middle of the garden. And that's going to be 
the bride said, I want to end the wedding on something that no one will ever forget. And I guarantee you, they will not forget this as they come around the corner. Oh, that's great. Oh, well, hopefully after it's done, you can let us know what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put out a post or something. I've probably already said too much, but uh, I think it's going to be really stunning. Yeah. Well, Dave, man, it's so nice to touch base with you. I, I follow you on Instagram. I love when you remind us just to breathe <laughs> because like I said earlier, I need reminders and you talk about that periodically. Well, you know, that seems to be uh, people are always sending me breathing memes. And You're, stuff the breathing like that. <laughs> You're the breathing guy. You're the breathing guy. Who knew? Who knew? But I, I, on those things, I only talk about what I need in my life. Yeah. Uh, and I think that when I can share the things that have changed the way I do things, why not? Yeah. No, I love that feed. I mean, you've got your business one, which is beautiful, beautiful pictures of the work you're doing. But I, I really enjoy looking at your personal one. Uh, I believe it's for people listening. I'll we'll say it again at the end, but David Beam 2, T-O-O, right? That's your personal one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Well, this is this is really nice to spend time with you and, you know, have a great uh, rest of the year and, and, you know, wish you all the best in the new year, Dave. And every every once in a while, we'll get back in touch. We'll, we'll see how things are going. You know, I'm here. Thanks for reaching out, Andy. Thank you for listening to my conversation with David Beam. Check out his website, which is davidbeam.com. That's spelled B-E-A-H-M, davidbeam.com. You can find him on social media at David Beam, and his personal handle on Instagram is David Beam 2 T-O-O. You can get all of this in the show notes at our website, ofthewedningbiz.com, or on your cell phone's podcast app. And also, don't forget to go to Zola.com forward slash Andy to create your free listing and get your first few connections for free. Again, that's Zola.com forward slash Andy, our sponsor for today. And if you can think of three good friends who you think would really benefit from listening to this interview, please forward it to them. And also, if you could leave a great review wherever you get your podcasts from, I would really appreciate that. That helps new people find the show. And finally, next week's guest, well, there isn't going to be one because of the holiday. So that gives you an opportunity to catch up on past episodes that you've missed. And if you could follow us in particular at Instagram, at The Wedding Biz, and we'll catch you in a couple weeks. <laughs>